For years, the public was astounded by the Parker-like movement from the Atlas robot made by Boston Dynamics. The backflips wowed the world, and all the balls and sticks thrown its way really showcased its agility and balance. It displayed amazing strength combined with an opposing figure, and the thoughts of James Cameron's Terminator started to creep into our minds. What are we creating here? And in the same time that it took to capture our imagination, the robots of Boston Dynamics faded from the zeitgeist. If the vision of Boston Dynamics was to enrich the lives of humankind, why does it seem like all the robots are built for tasks that wouldn't be beneficial to our everyday lives? You might argue that it's still really cool and it might be fun to have such a capable robot, but it begs the question, what would you do with it? And for all the great advances the team at Boston Dynamics has made in the field of robotics, it's the motivation that ends the practicality of their robot offerings. Where Tesla diverges from the crowd of robotics is addressing the reason for its existence and sticking to it. Optimus is built to replace a human. That sounds weird saying it out loud, but that's the purpose of a robot. End of story. Where a robotics company can start losing the plot is wanting to create something superhuman, and it takes over their designing and planning. What would you pay for a robot that can jump a five foot gap? Huh? You don't have five foot gaping holes in your house? What if I was to tell you that I can sell you a robot that can run 10 miles an hour for $150,000? Oh, so your house doesn't have enough straightaways to get to 10 miles an hour in the first place, and you also don't want 150 pound robots running top speed past your children and your fine china, and more importantly, you can't afford the $150,000 price tag. That's what happens when your first principle thinking doesn't align with external motivating factors. Boston Dynamics has a long history working with the military, stretching back to the 1990s, and eventually pivoted to robot development with funding from an organization wanting a combat-capable robot. The name of the organization is DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. They exist to use your tax dollars to help push teams to innovate, but at the same time, prepare our government and military for a future that might come to pass. It's a noble idea that spawned groundbreaking technologies, but the root of it is the eventual military application of these technologies, first and foremost. So if that was a call to action for the robotic development that eventually would become Boston Dynamics' Atlas robot, what was Tesla's motivation? Well, here are Elon's exact words. Tesla robots are initially positioned to replace people in repetitive, boring, and dangerous tasks, but the vision is for them to serve millions of households, such as cooking, mowing lawns, and caring for the elderly. What we can take away from Elon's mission statement is that all they want to do is replace a human being doing something really uninspiring with an Optimus robot. For example, if you wanted to replace a dishwasher in the kitchen of a restaurant, how would you design that robot? Does it need crazily strong, hydraulically actuated arms and legs that can propel dishes into the stratosphere, but unfortunately lose its battery charge within an hour? If Boston and Nemesis wanted to quote, enrich people's lives, I think what they mean is strictly from the pure entertainment of it all. The Optimus robot has five fingers and uses vision only to recognize its surroundings, because that's how a human operates. If you intend to build a robot that enriches the lives of everyday people, they need to fit into exactly what that person does, because otherwise, you need to redesign tasks around non-human shaped robots or with non-human like ability. That makes the whole transition to a robotic or autonomous future much more costly, and thus putting the benefit out of reach for most. It's no different than watching a cruise or Waymo drive by. It looks like it was assimilated by the Borg with all these contraptions attached all over it. Science fiction might have polluted the idea of practicality. It's almost like we've determined that designing something to have the delicate touch that human fingers can achieve is no longer useful in the world. Brute force and power has its place, but in reality, we just want a robot to do our laundry or make dinner. Over-engineering, over-complicating creates really awesome things to look at, but it comes at the cost of power consumption, noise, size, maintenance, rare materials, support systems, and ultimately affordability. Practicality over parkour, that's the future.